Thanks for watching. This is the second video on Carlos Watson. So a little bit of background. So the company is called Aussie Media and it was co-founded by Carlos Watson, who is the CEO and who you're going to see in this video. Just a little bit on a summary of where the fraud allegations came from. So basically the COO impersonated a YouTube executive. So they were on a call with investors and want to raise 40 million. And the COO thought it was a good idea to pretend with a fake email and brag with the numbers and saying, yeah, you should invest in that media company company because they get so much attention. There were a few other things where he would claim that their show was on cable, which it wasn't, and maybe some things with financials, and then also claiming that Sharon Osborne was an investor, even though she sued them and was offered ownership in the company. And he said, oh, this makes you an investor, which it doesn't. So very deceptive language. I kind of concluded that he is a person who is an excellent communicator, but it's not really good at building trust because he seems like someone who's very professional, but also emotionally not expressive at all, a little empty. Let's see him once again having to defend himself in front of the media. Joining us now exclusively, Carlos Watson. Ozzy. Once again, this is the gentleman. This is Carlos Watson. The media's CEO. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for coming in. Let's let's start with the status of Ozzy as we sit right now. Reports that the company shut down on Friday. Is that true? Is, it, is the company shut down or are you still open for business? You know, we're going to open for business. So uh, we're making news today. Uh, this is our Lazarus moment, if you will. This is our Tylenol moment. Um, last week was traumatic. It was difficult, um, heartbreaking in many ways. And at the end of the week, we did suspend operations with a plan to wind. Does he seem heartbroken? This is one of the things I said in my last video. I was kind of confused because it seems like such an excellent communicator, but yet I don't trust him. He doesn't seem emotional at all. If you say this is heartbreaking, then I would expect not a broken heart, but some emotions in your face, in your body language, in your words, in your voice. I've seen nothing. Down. But as we spent time over the weekend, we talked to advertising partners, we talked to some of our readers, some of our viewers, our listeners, our investors. I think Ozzy is part of this moment and it's not going to be easy. Um, but I think what we do with newsletters. What By the way, so this is something that he asked right in the beginning is, is the company shutting down? Because clearly they were at the brink of being destroyed because of all these fraud allegations coming out. So all of this brought them down almost. And then what is hilarious, which I read on Wikipedia, it's so funny, because basically the board of directors from Aussie Media announced on October 1st that the company will cease operations. So company's going to shut down the board of directors announced that on the 4th the CEO Carlos Watson announces that the company is going to keep going with a reduced board of directors so basically the board of directors calls saying okay we're going to shut down he says no actually you're going to leave and I'm going to keep going so he kicked out the board of directors and then he just keeps going by himself what we do with tv shows original tv shows podcasts and more I think has a place. Let's talk about this phone call. I mean, did, did you know that that your partner, the co-founder of this company, was going to impersonate a, a YouTube executive on a on a call? Yeah, no. And it's it, it's sad and it's um it's difficult. It was wrong. Um, obviously, does he seem apologetic? Does he seem like he thinks it's wrong? If you look at Elizabeth Holmes, and she's always my go-to example, I'm not going to mention Elon Musk anymore because some people really hate him. If you look at Elizabeth Holmes, she would distract by her answer. Her answer wouldn't match the question. She would just drag it somewhere else. He is answering every question head on, but he doesn't seem aggressive. The only thing he's missing is he doesn't seem sincere because he lacks the emotion behind it. They figured it out very quickly. But and here's the thing. Someone would wonder, perhaps, I mean, you, you're on a call with Goldman Sachs. You're trying to score $40 million in funding. Why, why were you not on the call and how did you not have any knowledge of, of the call? You know, part of the fundraising process, you end up talking to a lot of people. Okay. And I'm not on every call. And there are lots of these reference calls that happen. They, I think, probably ended up talking to three, four, maybe five uh, of our references. They also talked to members of the team. They talked to some of our other investors. And so there are a fair number of things that are involved and you're not a part of all of them. But over a three month period of time, I spent a lot of time with them as part of the process. As you know, there, there could be some serious legal implications yes. with regards to, to that call. Have yeah. you heard from the FBI? Have you heard from law enforcement at this point? I, d I definitely you? haven't. But, but here's what I will say. Um, uh, that's a tragic situation. It's horrible. Nothing good about that at all. 
I am grateful, though, that Goldman didn't invest because that would have been the worst of all. Does he seem grateful? I have to say this all the time. Every time he says something that's kind of has an emotional basis, like angry, grateful, heartbroken, it's kind of funny. You look at his face and he seems like, huh, what am I going to say next? Or he doesn't think, okay, what am I feeling right now? I don't even know what that face means. I have to reiterate this. Eight years has he spent with his co-founder. They found it in 2013. He has known this guy for eight years. And now he impersonated a YouTube executive this can't be the first thing he probably did something crazy before that there's no way he waited for eight years until he got the crazy out for sure he has done something at least once a year there's at least eight crazy things that happened before that and now he says i don't know this you don't need to look at his body language to ask a question there you know this guy for eight years this can't be the first thing my question would be has he done something crazy before and if he then says no then this makes no sense And several months later, to Goldman's enormous credit, uh, they stepped forward and began a new advertising partnership with us. And so I think part of that was a recognition that as tragic and not okay as that was, that the larger company, Ozzy, has done some pretty special things when it comes to premium content, forward-looking content, and really a diverse set of audiences. Let's let's talk about the company for just a moment. I mean, you're announcing that you are, in fact, open for business. Okay, so here's the thing. He calls it an advertising partnership. I would like to know what exactly that entails and what that means. This could be actually something you just put out to make it sound good, but it might actually not be good because he says that they were considering to invest $40 million. Then there was fraud, or at least attempt fraud it would have been fraud if they raised the money and he impersonated but because they didn't i guess there was no crime there but he says that now everything is good because goldman sachs did a partnership deal with them i would like to know what that entails how big is the deal is it comparable is it a small deal how relevant is that is that something they would have done anyway do they have like a million different partnership deals does them doing the advertising with aussie media mean that they approve of that company or would they also do advertising advertising with Theranos if it was still existing even after the article came out because they don't care if it's a foreign company or not we just want to do advertising so is the advertising deal if it is a deal is that a stamp of approval or not this would be my question but it's not just that phone call I mean there, there were reports that uh, Ozzy had been inflating numbers for years digital traffic numbers there were billboards in Los Angeles that you had to take down after Amazon claimed that you were making claims on those billboards that weren't entirely true uh, Uh, your your show on 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 YouTube, uh, you I guess said at one point that the show was going to be on A and E, but it wasn't going to be on A and E. He has such a straight face. This is like he's saying, and you keep farting really loud in the cinema. And he's like, mm-hmm, yes, yes, uh-huh. yeah, we all did mistakes, you know. What is this? He's like getting all these accusations. He's like, oh yeah, and he's like watching a movie. I don't know what he's doing. If you get these ridiculous accusations, if he would smile, I would say okay, he has some personality there. But the fact that he has a straight face. It's kind of a little worried. Why would anyone trust Carlos Watson moving forward? Yeah. Uh, this is the big one. So actually, I pause here because I want to say this before he answers. Why should anyone trust him? So first of all, I wish him the best. And if he's doing nothing illegal, it's fine. He has a company, he has a YouTube channel. All the best to this person, for sure. Unless he's doing something illegal, then I guess all the prison to this person. But I find that he is lacking a little bit the emotion, which makes me not trust him, which makes me feel like everything he says is not sincere. Because he's an excellent communicator physically from his body language language but he doesn't have the emotion if, and you can't fake that this is i think one of the big things how you differentiate a good actor from a bad actor that they have really good control over their emotions so with him lacking that why should we trust him let me give steve jobs as an example because steve jobs was kind of good with that when he got criticism he would sit down he would level with people he would breathe out and he would calm down he would bring people in with that this was a very trustworthy thing if you are somewhere and you say okay this is really bad and someone sits down yeah you're right you know if they have this attitude this is a very trust building thing but why should we trust him great question and fair question and heartbreaking question because i'm used to people trusting me does he look heartbroken i'm the son of teachers you've known me for yeah. a number of years we've interacted in a variety of ways and i once worked here at nbc uh, as part of the he almost smiled there this was an almost smile MSNBC family. I think here's what I would say. Last week, I got some incredibly bad advice. I got advice from some crisis communications folks to go silent. I should not have done that. What ended up over the next week was some half-truths 
Um, in some cases, some real things that we did uh, not well and that we should have done better and different, and we will own them. We'll own them around data, around marketing, around other places. But, but I wish I had stepped up. I wish I had engaged. And part of my reason of being here with you today is to engage on those things, including some of the things you mentioned. Let me take the A&E thing as an example. Originally, we did conceive of this show for A&E. We've had a two-year partnership with A&E. We've done shows for A&E, for Lifetime, for the History Channel. And originally, we talked to them about it. They moved too slowly on it. We notified them that we weren't going to do it there. We were going to move it to YouTube. The gentleman who you mentioned and who was part of yeah. that story knew that we had moved it to YouTube. And yet, and yet now comes forward and says, I didn't know, I didn't know. Of course he knew. Okay. Let's, let's accept that as fact. What about this, this Sharon Nazi Osborne? This is word versus word. You can't really say who is right, who is wrong if you don't have proof. Yeah, once again, I have to say, I wish him the best if it's not illegal. Do your thing. He has a big company. Do that. Do your media thing. Do the podcast. Get more Emmys. Do more shows. All the best to you. There's no need to be really negative here. But he is very deceptive. Uh, at one point. I mean, that's enough. That, yeah, but yeah. you yep. said that yep. they were investors. Yep. Sharon Osborne last week on CNBC said, she never, she's never met Carlos Watson. So what's true there? Um, so it's true that she hasn't met me. Um, and it's true that um, as a result of her suing us, so she sued us over the name Ozzy Fest, which right. is our music and ideas festival. She had OzFest. The agreement was that we were... How was that not obvious? No wonder he lost. We had to settle. Aussie Fest, Oz Fest, come on. This is, this is like me creating something that is called Disney Land. And then I'm getting sued by Disneyland. So this is so obvious. We're going to give her shares in the company. And the way I think about it, I think the way a lot of people think about it, if you own shares in a company, you're an investor. Now, she may not have liked that word. I said in the last video, this doesn't make sense. Let's just skip over that. You're not an investor because you have ownership. And let's be really clear. I'm not going to raise money by telling sophisticated people that Sharon Osbourne's an investor. No smart investor is going to okay. say, oh, great, you got Sharon Osbourne. So I think I said that clearly in the cases there. This is a funny dig at her. I mean, clearly she has business experience. Yeah, I don't know. But again, Craig, what I want to say is that the last couple of days gave a lot of people a chance to take cheap shots. And again, that's not to say that there aren't things that we could do better. We need to do better on data. We need to do better on marketing. I think there's some things we could do better on leadership and culture. Let's talk about data for Okay, now you heard his answer to the question, which you probably forgot because I almost forgot. And that is, why should people trust you? Which was kind of the question before that. Yeah, I don't trust them more now. I actually don't trust them more. Let's say you have a business and someone says, okay, why should I trust you? There are two cases. Number one is, I've never met you. Why should I trust you for this? And that's the other one. You have screwed up. Why should I keep trusting you? Why should I trust in you again after you screwed up. I think the only thing for him to actually become trustworthy is to, first of all, obviously own up to the mistake, which he does verbally. But I would say explain why this happened and why this cannot happen again, which is the big one. In his case, the distrust, the way I would see it is mainly from the investor side, because the people who watch his shows, they don't care about him lying or whatever it is. But the investors were the ones who were almost deceived by the CEO with the YouTube impersonation and the false statements with the A&E and cable and whatever it is, or YouTube originals, which didn't happen. The investors are the ones that are really suffering here. And these are the ones he should address with the question of, okay, why should I trust you? And I would say the biggest thing in that particular case, what he could do is that, okay, what we are going to do is we're going to actually, in our investor updates, in our investor presentations, we're going to now add proof for all the things we say. So when we say we have a show, there's going to be proof with that. And and everything is going to be solid. And we're going to have, for example, if we have something with Amazon Prime, we're going to have anonymized contracts, which we're going to put there. We're going to remove some sensitive information, but we're going to show these contracts to the potential investors. If we say we are on A&E, we're going to do the same. If we want to brag with our YouTube analytics, then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have validated information. We're going to have it signed. It's going to be a legal document. We're going to sign these documents. That means if these are incorrect, we are legal legally liable. This is what we're going to do. All the documents, we're going to sign them. This is what we're going to do for investors so that this never happens again. Obviously, he's never going to do that because, you know. Second, have you ever paid for digital traffic? Uh, like everyone, 100%. And, you know, this is such a good conversation to get into because guess who else pays? NBC. NBC advertises on Aussie. NBC advertises. But not, our, not to get into news. the weeds here. Sure. Uh, one of the knocks over the last few days is that Aussie had spent millions of dollars buying content yeah. that pops up mm -hmm. That, that you can't escape, that's popping up behind your browser. Is that true? I, I don't know about that, but, okay. but, but, here, but here's what Ozzy does. 
Wait, content that you can escape that pops up behind your browser? This is like the worst thing where you have something pop up, right? Be behind your browser? I mean, you don't see it if it's behind. Okay, I'm, I'm if you know, leave a comment. This we are unwilling to take our smart reporting, our terrific videos, our really good podcasts, and let the algorithm decide who gets to see it. Why should we do that? Hey, hang on one second. If we want to make sure that really interesting young audiences see our good work, whether we're profiling a young... That's not the concern. The concern is that they pay for traffic with investor money. And I'm kind of paraphrasing here because he didn't say that. But the concern is they take investor money, pay for traffic, have analytics that look really good because they have a lot of traffic and then show that to investors to raise more money. This isn't really it because investors invest in something if it's media because it gains natural interest. This is what media is. You don't push it into people's face. It's spam or advertisement. That's not it. They don't pay for advertising. They pay for media that it attracts people but if they use that money to do that it doesn't sound good i think this is a concern i've spent quite a little bit of time over the past weeks a month with pitch practice pitch preparation and i've been so obsessed now with whenever you hear a question don't answer the question answer the concern think about what is the concern behind the question and answer that don't answer the surface level question and in this case the question is about the investors being concerned about that so i would if this was asked to me i would answer the way i just said it i would address that concern young Amanda Gorman, a young Trevor Noah, a young Issa Rae, or other folks. Sure. I think it's smart of us. HBO does it. Spotify does it. Uber does it. You definitely say, I want this audience, and you've got to invest in marketing to do it. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about something here that's, that's personal to both of us, yeah. because following the, the racial justice protests um, last summer, there was um, a call for advertisers to spend lots more money with black-owned media. You got some of that money, and over the weekend, I talked to some folks who are pretty annoyed. I'm laughing at the facial tics, by the way, not at what he's talking about. Uh, that, that you got millions and they really didn't get anything. Do you, do you feel some sort of way that, that perhaps maybe you shouldn't have got as much money from advertisers? To... Why would I feel that way? Well, I mean, I, I mean the I mean, business I, I, collapsed I, last week. Carlos, I, the business is... You've, uh, you've the, got look, 90, you, you raised uh, almost $100 million. Right. And what do you have to show for it? Um, what we have to show for it is five newsletters. A dozen TV shows, either on the air on Hulu, Amazon, PBS, BBC. We won an Emmy. Emmy last year, as you know. The, the four we, episode series, uh, I know. Sure. Uh, six podcasts, including Cracking the Top Ten, and three festivals. You know, the so it's not a house of cards, because you know, you that's, know that's been the claim and, and over, the know, last, that, over the that, last that's week. And, and Craig, you, among others, know what a horrible thing that is, and you know how slanderous that is to do that. And when you saw people start to put my name in league with Elizabeth Holmes, who never had a... Elizabeth Holmes, what a name drop. Look at his eyes. Oh no, did I just mention Elizabeth Holmes? <laughs> this is like this famous clip of Richard Nixon saying, I'm not a crook. People have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. <laughs> I'm not Elizabeth Holmes. And he's like the big eyes. <laughs> I want to pause on this frame. <laughs> this is the most emotional he can probably be a really harsh boss. I don't want him to be my boss. <laughs> Imagine this is your boss. Okay, he mentioned Elizabeth Holmes. It's a weird mention if you think about it, because I would actually be more making an analogy with anyone putting money into advertising rather than production. He basically claims he has his great show and puts money into advertising. But then again, we don't know how much. We don't know if 90% goes into production, 10% into advertising. I mean, come on, this is what media companies do. Or is it that he actually puts a lot of money into advertising, even disproportionate money? How many of his views come from advertised content? This would be interesting. Very interesting that he mentions Leather Psalms. Let's see why he mentions that. It's pretty obvious, but... Real product who raised, from the, who raised billions of dollars when, again, we have five premium newsletters that goes out to millions of people, a dozen TV shows, including winning an okay. Emmy, right? That's not a house of cards. And so, look, we're back. It's not going to be easy. But I hope if people who's, now... Who's backing you? If, who's, if people, who's, if who's people, funding the... If people now know the name, if people now know the... By the way, Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos was actually selling tests already to the end consumer. This was one of the reasons. There were people had cancer and they got like their measurements done. It's not like she didn't have a product. She had a product. It was just a really, really bad product. He has the newsletters. The name Ozzy, O-Z-Y. Yeah. I hope they'll sign up for our newsletter. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Who's, who's funding you right now? Can you tell us that? I can't. Who's no. on the board? Um, myself, Michael Moe. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Carlos yeah. Watson. Pre he fired the whole board because they decided to shut down the company and said, no, 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 kick them out. No, I'm the board. Appreciate you having me. Thanks for coming in and answering you. the question, CEO uh, Carlos Watson from Osmo. All right, that's pretty much it. So there's more videos, but I don't know how interesting this is. So please tell me if this is interesting at all. If this is interesting at all, there's another video where it's a little long form. It's like a one hour video. So I would look a few clips from that. But what's interesting about that, he's more relaxed. It's a very different environment. They're like all very chill. He's more relaxed. He's getting some more questions because obviously it's a longer interview. But yeah, I also find this one interesting. Let me know if you want to see that. Leave a comment. Otherwise, see you on the next one.